This programme consists of six mathematical problems for use with the interactive whiteboard. Year groups are suggested for each. The problems can also be downloaded from the Teachers TV website. Well, I know, I know, I agree. Aunt Agatha is one of seven identical sisters. Agatha and her sisters are mad about dogs. Every year, Agatha arranges a trip to the seaside for her and her sisters and their furry friends. With so many sisters and spaniels to transport, she always books a minibus. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Vix Vehicles. Yes, my name is Agatha. I rang last year. Yes? No? Do you like dogs? Oh, Look, my man, to the point. Uh, me and my dog and my sisters, well, my sisters, dog, and I like to... Your vehicle, madam? A mini? Beauty, isn't she? 1.6 engine, Cooper trim, power steering, front wheel drive. Oh, seven! I ordered a mini, but he'll stop that racket. Bus! Five speed transmission. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say one of seven? How many septuplets and their spaniels can you fit in a mini? One in the front, one in the back. What fraction of Agatha and sisters travel in each journey? What fraction of the total number of sisters and dogs? And how many journeys will Vic have to make to take them all to the seaside? Twenty-three nil. Five hungry players. Time for tea. Hey, ball off the table. Now, who wants a pizza? Me. Right, now there's five of you and three pizzas. Hmm, this is where my maths kicks in. Dad divides each pizza into quarters. And all five take a slice. Who's up for seconds? Me! Me! <laughs> Cody? I'm full. Four out of five children have a second slice. What fraction is left? train runs for 900 miles on one tank of fuel. The distance between London and Bristol is 120 miles. What fraction of the total fuel does the train burn on each trip? And how many journeys can the train make before it needs refueling? How many miles into its final journey would the train get if the driver forgets to refuel?
Every spring, come rain or shine, Muddy Ears the gardener plants out his veg patch. Each day, he sows a different crop. Lettuce seeds. 200 lettuce seeds. I do dearly love lettuces. They are my favourite. Trouble is, I'm not the only one that does dearly like lettuce seeds. Tweeters, house sparrows, robins. In fact, of all the seeds I do plant, I do reckon one fifth get eaten by them tweeters. One out of five. And I do have some other hungry chompers in my garden as well. Slobbering slugs. Out of all the seeds I do plant, I do reckon them slugs eat 0.25. 0.25. And the rest are devoured by me. <laughs> 200 lettuce seeds. If the calculations are correct, how many will get eaten by me? Should be a warning on the packet. The fraction you will lose and the fraction you will eat. It's Sahara's Gran's birthday. And Sahara wants to look her best for her grand's party. No. Mm. So have you decided yet? No. No. <clears throat> the only option is to make some new clothes. Sahara designs two new shawar kameez suits, one with a long sleeve kameez and one with a sleeveless kameez. She measures her existing clothes to work out how much fabric she will need. First the shawar trousers. They require 0.9 metres of material. Second, the long sleeve kameez, which requires 0.8 metres of material for the body and 0.25 metres for the sleeves. And finally, the sleeveless kameez, which requires 0.7 metres. Sahara and her mum buy three rolls of fabulous fabrics, each a different length. How many? Two metres. Two metres, OK, hold that. It is one meter fifty. Okay. It's one meter eighty. All right, so which one's it going to be? If she wants the suit with the long sleeve kameez to be made from the same material, which colour would she have to choose? And what choices would she have if she wants the suit with a sleeveless kameez to be made from the same material? Zoe the zoologist has a new assignment. The sleepy gibboon. Isn't he a beauty? But just how much does he live up to his name? That's what I want to discover today. Now, I have my alarm clock and my stopwatch. And I'm going to observe this sleeping beauty of a gibboon for one hour. Each time he stirs, whenever there's a blink of an opening eye, I'll hit my stopwatch. And when the alarm goes, I'll know precisely how many minutes he's been awake. 
and we'll be able to work out what percentage of time the shut-eye, slumbering, snoring, sleepy gibboon has actually been a wakeful gibboon. It's a fascinating conundrum. Go! Eighteen minutes later... Oh, that's me! Oh, got it. Oh, missed call. Another 14 minutes pass and... Excuse me, what are you doing? Scientific research. I am studying this sleepy gibboon, Simianus somnus, <laughs> to see how much it lives up to its name. Of course, he must wake up sometime to breed, to search for food, to eat. And what I'm doing is timing what proportion of time the sleepy gaboon is awake in an hour and what proportion of time he is asleep. And as it stands, he's been asleep for 33 minutes. Right. Right. Well, must get on. I have a gaboon to observe. Sixteen minutes on, and Zoe is... Perhaps you can work out the timings for her. Whilst Zoe looked for her phone, the sleepy gaboon was awake for 13 seconds. Whilst she talked about her research, he was awake for 46 seconds. And whilst Zoe sleeps, he dances for 11 minutes and 1 second. Time up. Zoe, of course, will say the answer is 60, but how long was he asleep over the hour? And what percentage of the hour was the sleepy gaboon actually awake? 